Servus everyone! Today we're filming in Vienna in the 9th district, right here on Nussdorfer Strasse 33 in front of the restaurant Taj Mahal. This is spy capital at its best. Look at the lady with the baby pram. You might think she's walking the child. Nothing of that sort. In reality, she's secretly filming a Soviet spy who is a high-ranking officer in the Norwegian Foreign Ministry meeting his two KGB controllers from Moscow. Now look at this innocent tourist from Czechoslovakia and specifically from the southeastern part, Slovakia, one of the Austrian closest neighbors. The country is still under the communist regime and it demanded considerable preparation, great resourcefulness and good contacts to be able to visit Vienna, which is virtually just around the corner. And over there, across the street, is another tourist. It seems he doesn't know how he got to this place far away from the city center, but he's happy to take pictures anyways. Here is a minivan with Vienna city plates, parked on the side of the street. The doors are closed, the driver is absent, and the van does not raise any suspicion. All this is a stage show. The lady has a secret miniature camera mounted inside the pram. The Slovak tourist is not a tourist, and not even Slovak, but a staff member of the Norwegian Police Security Service, POT. The vehicle is a disguised surveillance van, fully equipped with high-resolution optics and technology for discreet communications and voice recording. The surveillance team of 14 operators arrived in Vienna at the end of January in anticipation of an important visitor from Oslo. They have already been here before. As in every other covered operation, all their activities are strictly secret. The Austrian State Police and the Directorate General for the Public Security are not informed. Altogether, about 100 shots were taken to be later included in a long indictment. The spy and his KGB case officers meet right here on Nustofa Strasse and proceed to the restaurant. During a sumptuous lunch of the Indian cuisine menu, the spy, whose name is Arne Trehold, would hand over a bunch of secret documents to his KGB friends. Both General Gennady Titov and Colonel Alexander Lopatin would greatly enjoy both the lunch and the meeting. They, in turn, passed over their agent an envelope containing 27,000 US dollars, all in 50 and 100 dollar notes. The exchange took place here at the restaurant table in August 1983. As a result of a meticulous operation of the Norwegian POT, Trehold was arrested on Friday, 20th January 1984 by Ernold Tofte, head of counterintelligence at Oslo airport on his way to Vienna to meet with KGB officers. In his suitcase were 66 secret documents that he intended to deliver to the Russians. Several days later, five Soviet diplomats were expelled and four others banned from returning to Norway. Treholt was convicted for treason for passing classified materials to KGB and to the Iraqi intelligence service. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison, one year short of the maximum sentence allowed under the Norwegian Penal Code. However, in 1992 he was pardoned and released. By the time the Soviet Union had successfully disintegrated and soon Treholt found himself in Moscow the capital of the new and wild capitalist Russia. From this point, Treholt's exciting and rather little-known life began. Full of adventures, foreign travel and lots of money exceeding investments in Nord Stream or similar enterprises. First, still in Moscow, he started a business venture with his two KGB case officers from Oslo, now KGB generals, Gennady Titov and Vladimir Zhizhen. Soon Treholt, a journalist, whose last job was the Norwegian Foreign Ministry press chief, suddenly became an investment banker. Bank Austria Kreditanstalt, the leading bank in Eastern Europe, worked in Russia in the late 1990s through a network of subsidiaries, which were presented to investors as Kreditanstalt Investment Bank Russia. Its managing director was Yuri Lapatinsky, a young man from Kremenchuk, a city in central Ukraine. The network included various offshore entities based in Jersey, Guernsey and Cyprus. So Treholt moved to Cyprus and settled in Limassol, its offshore business capital. Here, on 4th March 1998, 
he became one of four founders and shareholders of the company RIM Investment Management Limited or RIM Russian Investment Management Limited registered at Tekas Lisioti 21. Its director was one Irina Kolomchuk, who at the same time occupied a similar position in many other companies registered in Cyprus. As follows from its name, RIM's activities were aimed at Russia. In October 2004, Treholt and partners, each with 25% stake at RIM, sold RIM to FMC Securities Limited, where Treholt continued as CEO. Their main fund was called the Russian Federation First Mercantile Fund and had over 150 million in total assets. This fund was established by the Austrian bank Kreditanstalt, with Yuri Lepatinsky as its manager in 1995. When Kreditanstalt withdrew from Russia in connection with the financial crisis in the autumn of 1998, Lepatinsky took over the fund and established the first mercantile capital, FMC. The Austrian Kreditanstalt Bank, founded in 1855 and associated with the Rothschilds, is now defunct. The company First Mercantile Partners LLP was incorporated on 21st June 2006. Its directors were Gennady Lepatinsky, from Kremenchuk, Ukraine, the elder brother of Yuri, Yuri Lepatinsky, now resident in Edinburgh, Scotland, and FMC Securities Limited from Limassol, represented by Treholt. Our episode ends here, because from Vienna we shall have to travel to Scotland and several other places to get a closer look at the Scottish Salmon Company. To Switzerland, to check the investment company with an interesting name, SIX, SIS AG, to Bermudas, and finally back to Cyprus, where Treholt had worked at least until recently as executive director, vice president at United World Capital, also known as Mitos. Which, of course, is a long way to go.